Ramon Calderon, and I'm in the eighth grade, and my project is in the category of material science. In my project, we're working with shape memory alloys. Basically, what those are are they're alloys that once you deform them, then apply heat source to them, they'll return to their original shape. This is caused by a phase transformation that that causes the change in the shape instead of applying in, and instead of applying heat, we're gonna apply electricity across the coil. That way we know we're applying constant amount of energy, electricity. Uh, we're going to use 5 volts, which heats the coil instead of applying random heat. In addition, we're adding the 20 gram weight to the coil. And when we deform the coil, like that, and then we apply the 5 volts uh, to the flower, the coil will slowly heat up and the coil will retrieve its shape and the weight will go up. Uh, yeah, the weight will go up. If we calculate the distance traveled by the weight and calculate the time it takes, then we can calculate the acceleration. In addition to this, the acceleration, there's also gravitational acceleration, which is going downward, like gravity. Uh, once we know uh, acceleration and mass, we can calculate force, which is mass times acceleration. We can also calculate the energy, which is uh, mass times the gravitational acceleration and the uh, distance traveled. That same energy is converted to work. Work, work can be calculated by a formula, uh, uh, force times the distance. Uh, energy and work will come out to the same value because energy is converted to work. The units uh, for force is Newton and for energy and work is Joule. We use nine different coils in the experiment uh, with slightly different uh, with slightly differences in length. And if we plot the force and energy generated in the nine different coils, we see that there's a scatter. There's a scatter in the work per unit mass. There's a scatter. And some of it is it and some of it's an experimental error. And some of it's the dis is the differences in the coils itself. To normalize that we take the force and energy we calculated and divided them by the mass of each coil. That way we have plots of newtons per gram or joules per gram. As a result, we see this nice linear uh, relationship indicating that the smaller coils are more efficient. This is the, this, <laughs> the same is true for energy. If we ignore that, that one data point, we can also see a, li a declining linear relationship. One would expect uh, that the relationship should be a uh, constant for force per gram or energy per gram. This means that the bigger coils have a higher total force, but we see that there's a declining relationship instead. The reason here is that when the coil retrieves its original shape, it starts very slowly in the beginning, fast in the middle, then slow again in the end. Our accelerations, our acceleration calculations assume a uniform value, uh, which is responsible for some experimental error. This error can be responsible for the declining, let me see, the declining linear relationship. But regardless, we can conclude from here that overall, the smaller coils have a better force per gram reactions.